of the antiderivative, what do you think it's going to give me? Amazing function. Amazing function. The f of x. Yeah. This is true. And that's a true statement as well. That dx, I'll make the note right here, that dx tells you what variable we are integrating with respect to. So this right here says, which variable to integrate? That's why when we did this, um, now we can actually have symbols for it. Let's go ahead and try to do an example that we've had like probably five times, but just so you get the symbols down. We've actually done this problem. I think we've done it, I've had it on the board several times, but we've actually done it twice. The integral of x squared dx says, I want you to find the antiderivative of this function. What's the function? with respect to the variable x. That, that should match up. That has to match up for you to do it, okay? You can't do it if it doesn't, at least not with our, our single variable calculus that we're, we're doing. So if we're doing the integral of x squared dx, we're going to find the antiderivative of x squared. What's the antiderivative of x squared? We actually already have that. Yeah, that's the one-third. Or x cubed over 3 is fine. That doesn't quite do it yet. We also have to have, plus c. it's crucial, we've got to have that. Plus c. Oh, minus c, right? And also minus c. Well, if you had minus c, you could write that as plus negative c, right? So you're always going to write plus c. So c is just some arbitrary constant that can stand for anything. That's how you do most of these problems right now. You kind of find it says antiderivative of this function with respect to that variable, and we know how to do at least one of them, right? But we don't know how to do any other one. So right now, what I'm going to do I'm going to give you the basic integration table. Listen, if it doesn't fit in the basic integration table, you cannot do it right now. Okay? You can't create your own calculus here. If you, <laughs> if you do, you're better than Isaac Newton or Godfrey Leibniz, who invented the stuff way back in the day. That day was <coughs> 1600s. So. Uh, probably not going to happen, so don't invent this. Just follow the table. You do have to memorize it. I'm not going to put this on the board, but trust me, you will. The only tough ones are really the uh, some of the trig ones that I'm going to give you right now. Some of the trig integrals are, are hard to memorize. But think of it this way. You already know the derivatives, right? We're just undoing them. So that's where all this stuff is going to come from. In fact, the table I'm about to give you is going to have the derivative and then the integral that's associated with it. You ready for it? Okay, so... And this is called the integration table? Yeah, basic integration table. <coughs> the table you know, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of integration tables. Oh, yeah, most of the back of your book has just all those weird pages, right? And they look at, what are all those? This, the curvy things. Someone had fun just scribbling. No, no, no. Those are integrals, and they mean something, right? They, they all have different formulas. Uh, by the way, this, this long, what is that thing? It's integral, but what does it look like? What letter? It's an S. And what we're going to come across in section 4.3 is that that's actually a sum. This is going to blow your mind. But remember how I told you that you can add all the rectangles together? That's what you're doing. That's a sum. It's a sum. Sum with a limit, basically. That's where the dx comes from. I'll show you all this. I'll make it very clear to you as we get there. But this is what we're doing. This is a way that you're adding all the infinite rectangles together and getting an area. You get it? Kind of cool. Kind of cool. It all makes sense in a little while. So basic integration table. Like I said, I'm going to start you off with the derivatives, and we're going to come up with the integrals that, that are corollaries of them. Be, because we know an integral undoes a derivative, right? So if we know the derivative, we should be able to somehow manage to get an integral out of that. So let me ask you this. What's the derivative? We'll start very simply. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? One. Very good. One. 
derivative of x is simply 1. Derivative of 2x would be 2. 4x would be 4. So the derivative of x is, is 1. What that means is this. Hopefully you find out what I'm going to do here. What's the integral of 1? What do you think? If the derivative of x is 1, the integral has to undo a derivative. That's what this says here. A derivative undoes an integral, an integral undoes a derivative. So they have to go in reverse. They're like inverse operations like division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, square and square root. Mm. Same idea. So if the derivative of x is 1, the integral of 1 is x. Sure. Why? Think about it. You're undoing this like it's a derivative, right? That means if you take a derivative of this thing, it should give you back that. Does it? Mm -hmm. Now we're missing something here. Plus C. Plus C. You okay with this so far? Okay. You know, let's do this in general. <coughs> what was the derivative? of x to the r power, what do you do with that? What do you do? Okay. We add one to the... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about derivatives here. Derivatives. How do you take a derivative of that? Minus r multiplied by r. Okay, multiply by r first. And then subtract one from the r. Yes? So like x cubed, you'd have 3x squared. So this would be r x to the r minus 1. You follow me on that? Okay. That means that an integral should go in completely the reverse order. So where we took a derivative, we multiplied and then we subtracted, right? The reverse order of that is add and then divide by that new number. Does that make sense to you? So here we we multiplied first and then we subtracted. For an integral that goes reverse, that means you're going to add and then divide. Add and then divide. So our integral says, I'm going to take, oops, not r, x. I'm going to take my x. I'm going to add 1. I'm going to add 1 to that exponent. And what do you think? Am I going to divide by r, r minus 1, or r plus 1? R plus 1. Look what you do here. Look, we actually did this, right? How to get from here to here? You add 1. But you don't divide by 2, you divide by 3. Why? Because when you take a derivative of it, the 3 has to match up with that to go away. Right? So you're, you're matching up the new exponent with that denominator. Do you follow that? So this isn't r, it's not r minus 1, it's r plus 1. Let's see. Basically it says this in English. You add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. That's what that says in English. You add 1 to the, new, to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Exponent. Shouldn't that be r x to the r minus one? Yeah. Integration. This one? Yeah. Nope. No, I, I'm I'm kind of changing it here. I don't want to have this over here. I don't want to do the same thing. I'm just kind of using this as a, a template to what you're you're doing. You're doing this in reverse, right? So this says you're multiplying and subtracting. This says you're adding and dividing by the new exponent. I don't want to make it look exactly the same in this case. I, I know you, you can, but it's going to give you back x should r. What I want to give you is things so you can do this. x should fit. Right? Not, your integrals aren't always going to look like this. This would be way too easy. They're not always going to look like that. Okay, not, not going to do that. Yeah, no, this, sure, that would be x to the fifth. Too easy. But what happens when you get something like this? Well, then you have to know I'm going to add 1 to that. I'm going to divide by the new x component. <coughs> I'm going to put a c. And that's the correct thing. So when I take a derivative of this, it will give me back that. Does that make sense to you? That's the way this has to work. So yeah, I know that these don't match up exactly. I know that. Uh, also, one more thing I do have to mention before we go any further. Notice that sometimes you're going to have this. It's not even going to have a 1, because really, we don't even write ones most of the time in mathematics. So if ever you see the integral dx, you go, what's in there? It's a 1. It's a 1. Or integral of 2 dx. Well, that, that would be 2x. But this, that stands for the 1.
between the uh, between the, the function what integrated and the dx? Do you need parentheses there? You don't. Not unless you have um, a, a few terms. So they would have a polynomial in there or something. You may or you may not. Um, oftentimes people don't put parentheses in there because it's implied that you're going from the integral to where it says dx. Okay. Which, by the way, you must have the dx. If you don't have that dx, I mean that says you're not even integrating anymore. You don't, you don't have respect of which variable. You have to have that. It also closes off your integration. Does that make sense to you? It's kind of like the limit. Remember on the limits how you had to keep writing limit over and over and over and over again? If you didn't, I went, ha, 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 ha. I laughed at you and I crossed out your papers and I burned them. <laughs> well, not really. But you had to have it. it was, it's a must because that's the same idea. Okay. Are you okay with these so far? Some of you still don't like this. I know. Get used to it. <laughs> If you don't like this, you're going to hate me on the next few. Whew. Not this one. That's too bad. Uh, can you tell me what's the derivative of sine? Yes, very good. Yes, sir. With that in mind. What's the integral of cosine? Sine x plus c. Sine x plus c. Good. Yeah, very good. Do you feel okay with the the integral of cosine? <coughs> it's it's nice to think of these as I'm looking for the reverse of a derivative. I'm looking for something that when I take a derivative of it, it gives me back that thing. Do you follow? That's what you're trying to do. The reason why we have it this way is because if you take a derivative of this thing, you bring down r plus 1. Those cross out. You subtract 1 from the r plus 1 and you get r. That's why we have it written that way. How about some more? We have about five more to do. <laughs> Please don't freak out with this, but I'm going to do this a little differently. Told her not to freak out. She anyway. <laughs> uh, the derivative of cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? Now, stop. Stop. I'm going to change this. Because you know what we don't want to do? We don't want to have derivatives, or, and sorry, integrals of weird things. I don't want to know what the integral of negative sine x is. Because are you going to see negative sine x? No, probably not. You're going to see things like sine x. Do you get it? So I'm trying to make this thing, this thing, and the thing that I have over here. The only exception is that one. We don't write the minus 1. We have it in, in terms of r so you see it more clearly. But this, if this gives you negative, if the, the derivative of cosine gives you negative sine, what's the derivative of negative cosine give you? Sine. 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 Do you get me? That's what I want here. I don't want to know the integral of negative sine. I want the integral of sine. That's why I changed that. OK. You agreed that the derivative of negative cosine was positive <coughs> sine. You, you agreed with that? <coughs> so what's the integral of sine? Negative, negative cosine. Negative cosine. Are these going to take some practice to memorize? Sure. You betcha. Yeah, you betcha. You go in a reverse of derivatives, the opposite thing, backwards. 